How's it going everybody? It's Moonsong here. Yo! And today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at a deck profile that I have been working on for a very long time. I've been practicing it in a new format. I know I've had a couple of videos, but this seems to be the list that seems to be working. And I know it's very simple and generic and like a lot of the like techs are really straightforward, but actually the straightforward deck is actually pulling its weight a lot. It tops like a lot during the week. And I think it's still a really good deck. I mean, it's been doing pretty decently in a couple of, like, the things. And especially in South Africa, we currently have a weird meta. I mean, I know we've been having the uh, typical, like, should all invoke dogmatica shenanigans coming up. But, you know what? Um, I think this is, it's a really good deck profile. It's something that's really good. It's something that's also pretty affordable uh, in terms of most of the stuff you get. A lot of the stuff in here, except for the impermanence, obviously, are pretty cheap. Because impermanence, I mean, is, uh, I know it's a tough card to get but there are hand traps to substitute it and if you want to go uh turn one f like faker you there is typhoon typhoon is also pretty good as a trap um evenly uh, uh slightly affordable now so there are a couple of cards that are quite uh low value in this deck that you can get and a lot of them they are substitutes which is fine so let us get started with the deck profile first of all obviously we can see it's altergeist now altergeist woo, control deck for the days and it's not everyone's favorite deck but i i personally love this deck this is the first deck that actually earned me like a proper top in a regionals uh many many years ago uh but <laughs> i'm pretty like still happy it is the best investment i've ever made in a deck so let's go straight to the deck profile obviously we've got the standard one kung query um some people say don't play Kung Kuri. This card is amazing. It can literally survive a whole bunch of attacks. People forget it actually has a negate as it lands on the field. So the nice thing about it is that if uh, if you go into Faker and you use a Faker effect and they have a card that you really want negated, sometimes you don't always have to go for Sokit or some Malusik. Sometimes it's actually better to go for a 2400 defense booty, which can actually protect you and also negate like their strongest field spell or negate uh, there can be only one or something that's just like stopping you from actually playing. So Kankuri is actually really, really good. And it turns off a whole bunch of floodgates gates and everything like that. Secondly, we have three Marionetta, of course, the Trap Setter, the Recursion, that sort of thing. We got three Malusik, best level one in the game currently, I think, because it can send and do all those sorts of shenanigans and it gives you pluses and it's just so good. Uh, then we got Faker, the uh, the uh, I, I plus after I activate a trap and then I plus again and then plus 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 and then the Magic Specter Kieran which is Altergeist Sorkitas which is the bouncy boy of the of the group she will flutter you back to your hand so I love this is the standard sort of ratios for the Altergeist cards except for Kung Kuri, but I still personally believe everyone should be playing at least one Kung Kuri. Um I think it's really really good then we have the hand traps three ash that's it. Okay, I guess we can also have like three Imperm. Three Imperm is also really good because Imperm Faker, no matter what format it is, uh, three Imperm plus the three Faker is always good because Imperm Faker is pretty broken. Then we're going for draw power. We're going for a lot of draw power. I know we're playing Pot of Duality. Some people are offering to play Pot of Prosperity, but that shit is expensive. So, <laughs> uh, Duality is actually still good enough because most of the time you're special summoning during your opponent's turn and you're trying to slow them down. And the amount of times you open extravagance and you draw into part of duality it is really good and you usually search for the traps that you need now part of extravagance of course is the usual draw power that you will have with this deck um it is very i think it is the best draw power for this deck especially since the reprints came out i think it's pretty a little more affordable now it's like what 300 rand per, for one when back then it was like 800 rand for a pot but at least the price has dropped it's a little bit more affordable to get i think a couple of people might have a few spares if you look around there's a couple of dino players playing this and this is just a really good to get in general because a nice idea i know for now is try get staples first and then build their cores around those staples that you have that's a good idea so that's it for the monsters and the spells let's go for the trap lineup we have altergeist manifestation i know people are offering to play two but i don't like to see it in my opening hand because then you're attempting to set up and if you've got nothing else it is kind of dead uh, it is good for later on but i don't think it is good to see in your opening 
opening hand, which is why I only play one. Besides, it's settable through manifestation, uh, manifestation through Marionetta. Then we've also got Protocol. I like to play two Protocol, not one. Um, the reason why two, it's just like I know it's recurrable, but if they cyclone it, that's kind of a oof. And also, if you set the one, the nice thing is Marionetta can send it to the grave to summon another Altergeist monster. So it's literally a free plus of a monster just by activating a trap and you struggle to get monsters on the field sometimes with this deck which is why it's really good just to have the three with the free send and you can always recur it back with soul Keaters as well which is fine then we have anti spell fragrance um at one i know some people are like why well, are you only playing one but you know what it's just really good at one I, and also currently the best deck is um a l well, a lot of the best decks, like for example, Drytron, which is going to be coming uh, a problem soon. Then we've got uh, Invoke Dogmatica Shadow, which is a whole bunch of spells. And then Dinos also has a couple of spells. It just protects you from the board wipes and a lot of stuff like that. But the best one, obviously, is Imperial Order. As you can see, always play one. It is such a good spell. I, I mean, a good trap, a good spell negator. Uh, it's just really amazing just for protecting yourself from board wipes. Uh, um, and then we've got three infinite impermanence as I said before really really good card uh, I think it's pretty amazing uh, how it works with altergeist uh, faker and yes I think it's just in generally right now also a really good card because you can also do it during your turn which is nice it's basically like forbidden chalice but just a little bit better um, then we've got personal spoofing personal spoofing is really really good it's uh, it literally dodges a whole bunch of targeting effects protects your stuff um, and you can get the faker you need so I think that's really good and I think that the interaction between um, manifestation and spoofing is really nifty. Uh, now we're going back to main decking the judgments. We used to side decking them. Now we're going back to main decking because spells and the normal summons and everything like that are really pre prevalent in today's meta. I know Dragon Link is currently the best deck, but here in South Africa, I've only actually seen like three players playing it, and it hasn't been that much of a, f a threat. I have not had a problem against Dragon Link with Altergeist. I don't know why, I just haven't. And I think the reason why is coming up now in the deck profile. Three strikes, because strike is just a god counter trap, and it is so, so good. And then three torrential tribute. Um, I've got two secrets and an ultra, which disturbs the living hell out of me, but it's fine. Uh, torrential tribute is so good right now. It is so, so good, especially now that people do not have protection from destruction for their cards anymore. The only fear is obviously dragoons, but we will get to that in due time. Then if we go and we look at the side deck, um, we've got three DD Crow. Um, I know some people prefer to play Lancia and it kind of turns your opponent off for the turn, but I also feel kind of DD Crow takes the problem away indefinitely. Usually, if you're able to banish the invocation or something, or for dinos, you banish the musk, uh, it can really turn off a couple of combos. And it makes for uh, a really interesting... Um, uh, I just feel like it's just really, really good in general. Uh, I just, I like the card. I know Lancia can turn your opponent off for a turn, but the thing is, with Altergeist, you need to build up a couple of turns just to kill them quickly, because you're trying to slow your opponent down at this point. And what you want to do is you want your opponent to extend over the resources, so then they've used all their resources and you're still building up to yours, which is really cool. Then we've got one Pancratops. Pancratops, I still think, is really good. It can be your out to window, because funny enough, window still hurts this deck, because you can't actually multi-faker while window is on the field, but Malusi can out it anyway. But it's just, it's just a free summon to get through all your opponent's stuff, which I think is really good. Then we have the two Kaijus. Some people prefer to play more. I think you can if you want. It's up to you how you want to play it, depending on how many Dragoons are being played in your area currently. Um, in my area, I haven't seen that many Dragoons. Um, I'm playing the Gamasil and the, Garda the Godala. I need to get one more Godala, but this is for the, the Wind deck. Uh, because the uh, the wind barrier statue actually messes you up quite a bit, so you need an out to that when you're playing against bird up. And I've seen a couple of bird up decks here, so it is quite scary. And now they also have that smog that stops you from setting cards, so you have to be careful of that as well. So it might be good to play a couple more kaiju's. There's stuff of there's obviously the side deck is always interchangeable depending on where you are. Nibiru. Um, 
I mean, it's okay. I've seen it's helped me a lot in certain matchups, but I've never. I don't main deck it, and I don't think it's necessary to main deck. I would rather at this point right now because there's no um, there's nothing that rips your hand and stuff. It would probably be better to play things that you can out your opponent's board with, possibly like Raigeki. In fact, I think in the actual deck I play, my mistake, I am playing a Raigeki. So I know the Nibiru was there, but you know, let's put in the Raigeki. Um, the one Nibiru, make pretend it's two, whatever. I'll tell you why there's only one now. Uh, I remember I changed it recently, but let's go to the spells. Spells, we've got three Cosmic Cyclone for back row removal, plus the Harpy's Feather Duster. Um, these are for your Eldritch matchups. These are for any back row issues that will give you trouble. Um, I know Alter guys can get rid of that with Malusik, but you need a little bit more than that, of course. So we have those, and Cyclone is just really, really good. Um, like I said, Raigeki, board wipe. I mean, wiping someone's board is really good, plus they can't protect themselves from destruction. Then we've got two evenly matched. This is also for your back row deck, surprisingly, because this hits back row decks a lot better than monsters, I think, but it still hits monster decks pretty well. But yes, evenly matched is still really, really good. I'm testing it coming in and out of the deck. I haven't needed to use it yet because I've only been testing it for like a week or so, but I will let you know there's a tournament coming up and I'll let you know how it does. And then we have one Witcher's Strike because I love playing meme cards and I think it's really exciting. Um, so this is a really good card, especially going second against like combo decks. You literally set this plus strike and you can literally wipe your opponent's board. You send, you give them a bait to negate, and then you would just strike them. They try to negate, would just strike, and you strike their negate, and then they die because they lose everything, and then you just go fake and you go nutty. So that's pretty much the side deck. Side deck is interchangeable. When you're busy siding, I, if I'm going second, I do tend to side out a spoofing and maybe a judgment and the anti spell because those are usually like going first cards, and sometimes it's hard to get. If you're siding in your kaijus and your pancratops, and stuff it would be good to take out maybe a part of duality because obviously that will conflict with the special summon and everything so it's up to you how you want to side and how you want to go against what you're going against it depends on how you want to play then if we go for the extra deck we've got one access code talker because access to code talker is actually really a good way to cure in this deck and with the Celine um, in it as well Celine helps you get to the access code talker a little bit faster then we go into your dragoon outs which would be your akashic magician Yes, this is if they put Dragoon in the correct zone just for you. Uh, it is one way to out the Dragoon because it is a non-targeting bounce, which is actually really, really good. You just got to hope they place the Dragoon in the wrong place. That's one way to out it. Um, in case you can't, there's also Borrow Load, which is a bit harder to get into. There is Avermax, which is also hard to get into. And then we've got Ningosu, which has always been our out to Dragoon. So those are our Dragoon outs. Um, unless the Dragoon hasn't done a negate, you obviously have your three hex which is your main big boy of the deck. Once you summon Hextia, you're most likely going to win, especially if you're in an advantageous position. Then we have IP just for a free Link 2. If you've banished all your Hextias, IP is the next best, best thing to go into. And remember one thing is that Altergeist Multifaker do, does not give you the restriction if you do not use its summon from deck effect. So you can still trigger Faker from hand and then use IP's effect as long as you haven't triggered Faker's second effect. So that could be useful to think think about when you have IP on the field. Then Nightmare Phoenix and Unicorn, just generic uh, removal, which is really good, and I guess it's good for IP as well. And then you have your level one uh, links, which is your Link Karibo, which is really, really good. You need that. Uh, your Relinquished Anima, this is really good for taking opponent's cards. I know I play 1-1-1, one, 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 but you know what? I like it uh, because either of these are always good. And then your Salamangre Elmirage, this is a necessary need to play for if you just open a Soul Keezus with a manifestation you still have a bounce with the soul Keeter, so it gives you an extra form of disruption so yes this is the deck profile i have been using for a couple of days i think it's doing really really well um there are a couple of techs i'm wanting to try pretty soon so you guys can uh i'll let you know in a video coming to you soon what techs i'm going to try if you have any questions about any deck profiles you guys want me to do because i've got other deck profiles coming up for you and a lot more interesting content coming your way so let me know 
below what you guys think, what you guys want to see. And don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, hit that notification button because, you know, we just got to get this thing moving, get it going on up. Because the more I get from you guys, the more I can give. And I look forward to giving you guys so much more. So thank you guys for watching this video and we'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.